Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6 Practice Problems Review is on Unit 4, Lesson 2, Meanings of Division. In our first problem, 20 pounds of strawberries are being shared equally by a group of friends. The equation 20 divided by 5 equals 4 represents the division of strawberries. In question A, if the 5 represents the number of people, what does the 4 represent? Let's look at this here. We have 20 pounds of strawberries divided by 5 people. And we know just that that's going to equal 4. But you have 20 pounds of strawberries divided by 5 people. That's going to be 4 pounds per person that each person gets. In B, if the 5 represents the pounds of strawberries per person, what does the 4 represent? Well, again, if you have 20 pounds of strawberries, we're dividing it by 5 pounds per person. That means we're going to have then 4 people, 4 friends who are sharing the strawberries. In problem 2, a 6th grade science club needs $180 to pay for the tickets to a science museum. All the tickets cost the same amount. What could 180 divided by 15 describe in this context? Describe two different interpretations of the expression and then find the quotient and what it means for each interpretation. Well, they're saying 180 divided by 15 could be how many tickets the club could buy with $180 of each ticket cost 15. So if you were to take $180, and divide it by $15, that gets you 12 tickets. That's one case. In another case, they're saying, well, if you have $180 and you have enough money to buy 15 tickets, how much, I'm sorry, yeah, 15 tickets, that means the cost of each ticket is $12. So if you have $180 divided by $15 per ticket, that gets you 12 tickets. That's one situation. The other situation is if you have $180 and divided by 15 tickets, that means each ticket costs $12. Now write a multiplication equation that corresponds to each division equation. 10 divided by 5 equals what? Well, I know that I can take that what and multiply by 5 and get 10 because that what is 2, right? And then I could also do 5 times the what and that still equals 10. And that was right here in our solution 1. 4.5 or 4 and 5 tenths divided by 3 equals what? Well, your two equations for here would be I take the what and multiply by 3, I know I'm going to get 4 and 5 tenths. You could also take the what, I'm sorry, the 3 and multiply by the what to get 4 and 5 tenths. And lastly, 1 half divided by 4 equals what? Your answers are here, but again, you could take the what and multiply by 4 to get 1 half. You could take 4 and multiply by the what to get 1 half. Just switching the orders up. Write a division or multiplication equation that represents each situation. Use a question mark for the unknown quantity. Two and a half gallons of water are poured into five equally sized bottles. How much water is in each bottle? Well, if I have two and a half gallons and I'm dividing it amongst five bottles, that's going to be how much is in each bottle. I could also then take five, the five bottles, and multiply by how much is in each, and that would be two and a half. A large bucket of 200 golf balls is divided into four smaller buckets. 
how many golf balls are in each small bucket. If I take my 200 golf balls and divide it into the four buckets, I'm going to get how much is in each bucket. Or I could take my four buckets and multiply it by how much is in each bucket to get to the 200. 16 socks are put into pairs. How many pairs are there? Well, pairs two. And so if I have 16 socks and divide it into two, that tells me how many pairs I'm going to have. Or I could take the number of pairs I have and multiply by two, and that tells me how many socks I have at 16. Number five, find a value for A that makes each statement true. A divided by six is greater than one. Well, if I take six divided by six, that's going to be exactly one. If I take 12 divided by six, that's two, that's big enough. Uh, 24 divided by six, that's four, that's big enough. And they say any number here where A is greater than six, for example, A could equal seven. Well, if you were to take seven and divide by six, you will get a decimal here at 1.16 repeating. It's also looking at the fraction 7 6, which is 1 and 1 6, all equivalent stuff here. So you will get something that's greater than 1 there. What about 2? A divided by 6 is equal to 1. Well, we did that one. We stumbled upon that in our first answer. 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1. And so A equals 6. B, A divided by 6 is less than 1. Well, if we picked numbers that were bigger than 6, we are going to need to pick numbers that are less than 6 here. And so we could put in, say, 3 and divide it by 6. That's the same thing as 3 6, which is 1 half, which is 5 tenths, 0 0.5. They're saying anything less than 6, so I could put in a 5. 5 divided by 6. That's 5 sixths. Well, as a decimal, 5 sixths is 0 0.83 repeating. And lastly, a divided by 6 is a whole number. Well, you could pick any multiple of 6. Think about them. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. Because when you take those numbers and divide by 6, for example, 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 18 divided by 6 is 3. 24 divided by 6 is 4. 20, or sorry, 30 divided by 6 is 5, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so that's where they come up with, if A is a multiple of 6, then A divided by 6 is a whole number. Now we're going to complete the table and write each percentage as a percent of 1. And you can see the answers here on the right side, but let's go through how we get there. I love decimals to fractions because I can just read the decimal with my place value. And so that's one-tenth, right? Point 0.1 is one-tenth. Well, what is that as a fraction? We just kind of set it, right? One-tenth. And now one-tenth, that's going to be 10% of one. Zero point one. If you move that decimal over twice to the right, it is ten percent. Now seventy-five percent of one. Well, if we think of that as a fraction here, seventy-five over one hundred. If we divide by seventy-five on top and bottom, you get the fraction three fourths. And again, seventy-five percent. If you move that decimal over. Two times to the left, you can get the decimal 0 0.75, which is that 75 hundredths, which is 75%. They're all the same. One-fifth. Well, one-fifth is the decimal, two-tenths. A um, couple different ways to get there. You could divide. You could recognize that one-fifth is equivalent to two-tenths. That's also equivalent to 
20 over 100 if you multiply by 10 on top and bottom, which would get you 20% of 1. Now, 1 1.5. If I throw a 0 on there, move that decimal over twice to the right, we get 150% of 1. Now, 150%, let's see, 150 over 100. If I divide by 50 on top and bottom, I get the fraction 3 halves. And then 140% of 1, well, if we slide that decimal to the left two spots, we get 1 and 4 tenths. And same type of logic here, if we take 140 over 100, if we divide first by, say, 10, you can get 14 tenths. We recognize that both of those are still even. Divide by 2 again, and you get 7 fifths, and so 7 fifths is your solution there. And then our last question, Jada walks at a speed of 3 miles per hour. Elena walks at a speed of 2 and 8 tenths miles per hour. If they both begin walking along a walking trail at the same time, how much farther will Jada walk after three hours? And our double number line illustrates this perfectly for us. Um, our number of hours, 0, 1, 2, 3, they started at the same spot. After one hour, Jada went three miles, six and nine. Elena went two and eight tenths times two, five and six tenths times three, eight and four tenths, and then when we just compare, well, Jada went nine, Elena went eight and four tenths, nine minus eight and four tenths will get us an answer of six tenths miles further. And that's it for this practice problem review on Unit 4, Lesson 2, Meanings of Division. Good luck.